Vanderbilt BS. Altrusa. at uh, Hampton Inn at noon. So. Yeah, I could start off. So just to update, um, since primarily August the 6th, uh, the city has conducted now 29 presentations in the community. And then in July, we conducted three presentations. And so obviously today will uh, be our last presentation. And I was going to just remind everyone that we have to leave right to get there on time, need to leave shortly hereafter. So, and I'll probably just turn it over to the city manager to move on with what he's got to talk, talk about. And just, we do have another meeting. Lane will be there on vacation time at uh, six o'clock at the bridges tomorrow. Correct. Yeah, let me, let me uh, look at that here. It's actually, that meeting will start at 6.30 a.m. at the bridges. Upstairs. Upstairs. Yep. How are those going? I think they've gone very, very well. Um, <clears throat> very good response, very positive response. Uh, school board looks like on the 10th of September, they'll pass a resolution. Um, got a real good feeling from the school board meeting. <clears throat> we'll see if it's unanimous. I've really enjoyed a lot of the questions. There's been a lot of uh, good questions that you know we've we've been able to get out in front of to clarify rumors in the community. Um, really, kind of hammer out uh, uh, just some of the misconceptions I think of public safety overall and some of the challenges that we've been facing. Just this, just this weekend, we had, it was a busy weekend, and uh, a lot of it had to do with heroin, and I used to say drugs and mental health, and now it's heroin and mental health, so definitely some issues. But they've been good meetings, we've had positive responses, and, uh, you know, and even if the response was not positive, I, uh, we, we've relished in the discussion, so. The chief at, at your plan is, if this passes, is two more school resource officers. That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. And I'm just curious how the school district, I mean, how they kind of reacted to that plan. Is that good in their opinion? Is it enough? Those kind of, I'm curious what they have two to present, say. Okay, so three presentations really overall for the school. Uh, one was to elementary staff and teachers at the school kickoff meeting, and then the, another was for Centennial, Columbine, and then the high school, and then we kind of capped that a week later with the school board presentation. Sorry. And uh, we actually got applause from the staff and teachers for you know, seeing the need to add more school resource officers and ensuring that we have full-time coverage, at least in our high school and in, in our middle schools. And then I think we, we got an extremely positive response from the school board. As, and, and that's, it, it is a necessity. We, we do need that. Um, and our school resource officers uh, do a lot more than just keep our schools safe. There's a lot of uh, child outreach, especially in the realm of um, mental health because these officers build relationships with the kids. And so when they're having issues, they come to the officers oftentimes to try to get help. And so it's, wow. it's, our school resource program has been an excellent program over the years, but we do need to, we do need to get more staffing in that area. It must take a special individual to it does. have that kind of it, rapport with it students. It absolutely does. That's yep. Neat. Yep. Well, thanks. I thanks. was just curious. <clears throat> Thank you. So the other thing we wanted to talk about today was the ballot language that's on the council agenda for consideration this evening. And uh, Stephen and all of us as a team, Stephen did a lot of the initial legwork and then we all met on a conference call. We had Tom Pelt, who's a, a knowledgeable bond attorney uh, in the front range, help us out and give us some ideas from other communities and when they did their ballot language what you need to have in there, that type of thing, and just gave us good advice on that. So that's how we came up with the ballot language that's on the agenda for this evening. But we want to go through that um, today to get some input. If we need to tweak anything for tonight's meeting, uh, we're able to do that. Uh, and so we're 
here to answer any questions on that. Anything I missed, so Brock? Probably the best thing that Tom did is uh, what he cut out. Um, I mean, granted, it was kind of sad seeing hours of work go away, but um, but that's that's part of being an expert is knowing what you don't want in there as much. I am uh, very concerned that we have a spelt streamlined uh, ballot. Uh, so keep in mind, if we want changes to this, it will be a motion to accept with the following addition that will have to be read in. So, you know, it's since this has been published, I can't, you know, go back to the office right. and then, you know, swap documents. Right. Uh, because everything has to be, you know, above board. Uh, I know that there was some concerns on uh, whether it should say uh, plural building or buildings, uh, that'd be something uh, that we can discuss if, uh, if council's wanting uh, wording changes on that. Blaine and I would recommend changing it to police facilities, and then that solves the problem with singular building or plural building. So, I, I so it would be some a concern on the wording on that one paragraph also. So I think it would read something like funding costs associated with a public safety facility, including but not limited to lease purchase payments to provide facilities for the police department. So that's the last little dash, like the fifth yeah. one down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last yeah. And then there's two places that that would need to be changed. If that uh, is what people are wanting, I can type up that paragraph so if someone wants to read it, you know, make the uh, motion with that amendment they could just read that okay <coughs> i think it does make sense because we've been talking about potentially two buildings right just say one building and mm -hmm. it's conflicting already before we even yeah okay let's have that ready yeah, yeah. let's that makes sense it does I want to clarify, I asked Stephen this earlier, and so I just, I'll ask him again, even though I know the answer. But when we set, I know our intention is to make sure the public understands that any sales tax generated from this would be above and beyond the current funding. And the idea isn't to pull a switch where we, we take the new tax and then decrease the funding. But by setting in that going forward an annual amount not less than 43 percent of the general fund that can't be changed by council that can't be changed by city manager that's something people have voted on and i just wonder if going forward let's imagine a scenario where we add a huge thing to the general fund or we take something out of the general fund we're going to be locked into this no less than 43 percent and there's nothing we're going to be able to do about it. And I just don't, I just want to make sure that 8, 15, 20 years in the future, a future city council isn't, isn't cursing our lack of foresight. I don't, I don't have a solution. It's just a concern that the ballot language is so specific and doesn't, something people vote on can't just be undone later. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? So Barbara yeah. brought up as an example, say we, uh, this is how we're going to start, uh, say we sell the golf course to the rec district, um, so then all the money that had been in the general fund that goes towards the golf course, all of a sudden that is gone. Is so it this, part of the general fund? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it something non-related could throw that percentage askew. So in that example, that wouldn't be part of the general fund because that's a transfer. And so general, that's why we have the language general operational expenses. So we don't Transfers subsidize. Transfers aren't in there. Capital fund isn't in there. I so thought we were subsidizing. They don't count. I thought we were subsidizing the golf course out of the general fund. It's a transfer. To the golf okay. Course. So that, that wouldn't be included in, in the okay. calculation. Thank you. That, that alleviates Transfers that. to the capital fund as well. Okay. So if we build a, in the future, a $5 million whatever, and we transfer money 
from the general fund to the capital fund, that's outside of this calculation. Okay. That's why it's general operational expenses. Okay, that helps me understand that a little bit better. And are you, you must be comfortable, but I'm just gonna ask you, are you comfortable with setting a percentage of this? And you imagine the city manager 15 years from now, is she gonna say, oh my gosh, why did they say 43%? You guys like that. Huh? Yeah, feel like we're comfortable as long as we have the word operational in there. Okay. If it was general fund, then absolutely not. Okay. So that is where my concern stemmed from, and that's the answer that I get. Okay. Because operational you. is wages, salaries, ongoing equipment, all those types of operational expenses. Where does it say that? Um, it's in but the our last paragraph right before yes, no. Is our mm -hmm. transfers a set percentage? Does that percentage ever waver? Sure. Every year it's different based on the decision of council during budget. Well, if we have a, a you know, just a real takeoff in the economy and that 43% expands considerably, what do we do with the excess? I mean, we're going to carry money over for when the economy goes down? But if you're talking 43%, that could fluctuate considerably over sure. time. I, I brought that up at the last meeting. That right. I think eventually the PD is going to have too much money. Look at the guy over here with a big smile on his face. <laughs> oh, that, I that's don't know the that potential. I if the economy that. stays good and gets better and better for the next 30 years, there will be more money than you could put into a police department. However, the terminology public safety includes a lot of things. And so public safety, Blaine and I were chatting about it, it's not only the building that PD goes into and new officers, but putting in crosswalks is also public safety potentially. Putting in lighting in our alleyways so they're safer for people who are walking in the dark is public safety. So if we get to that point where all of the building needs are met, all the staffing needs are met, and there's more money in 10 years then the PD knows what to do with, the interpretation of public safety could get broader. Conversely, could we say that for the next 10 years, the annual amount will be not less than 43%? Sorry. No, go ahead. I just... You can say, I mean, that, I mean, that number is driven by council and the constituents who provided input in, based on the meetings and right. discussions and everything. And we so. based that 43% because that's what the funding of PD was out of to the 2018 audited numbers. Correct. I know where we got the We're 43. at 45 now, but okay. we wanted to use the audited numbers because right. they're actually. And, and if my concerns are hamstringing a council way in the future, another way, or not a council, but a city budget is really, Another way to, to prevent against that would be putting a time on this so that for the next 10 years, the police, um, the annual amount should be not less than 43%. I think just from what I'm hearing, and the mayor's been at all these too, so you could provide input and blame. What we're hearing from the public at all these meetings, I think if you did a 10 year, the perception would be, well, it's starting year 11, you're gonna, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm not care about the taxpayer anymore okay. and steal all their money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so not what I'm saying. So it needs to be through the life of the... Okay. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know if Dave has a difference. So they, no, I, I've heard the same thing. In my, And I don't know that there's a way to put language in here, but I would suggest that if we ever got in a situation... Within the next 30 years, if we ever got in a situation where the police department had, quote, unquote, too much money, then we would start paying that building off early. Correct. I mean, I, I, I would hope that, and I don't know if there's, I don't think there's a way to put that as a priority in language. I don't know. Um, it's, it's been in all the discussions. It, we if every, every place we I think talked, there's a lot of priorities, potentially. I mean, you, you have to have adequate reserves to face recession. Uh, the goal would certainly to be to try to pay the building off early. Uh, there, I, public safety is an ongoing thing in, in, into the future and we don't have a crystal ball but there that would absolutely be one of the goals if the money was present of course you want to make sure and try to reduce that expenditure as soon as you can so that it sunsets earlier I would also think if the economy is going such gangbusters that the police department <coughs> was flush 
that means the community is growing to a point that the 20 officer or 20 individuals we're hiring now wouldn't be enough. Mm -hmm. So as the economy improves, we're going to have new schools. Uh, if there's going to be new businesses, so I. I, I, up, yeah, I appreciate well. what Bill's yeah. saying, but I also think that it's not likely to happen just because that increased funding is indicative of a growing city, which would mean more patrol office, more school resource offices. And we really don't know all the economic stuff to get. And isn't there always the possibility of going back to another ballot issue? in 20 years and saying we don't need to do this anymore or we need to does that make sense we can Orders stop can it, it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> it would just be another ballot thing and whatever yeah, yeah. and and could tackle that in 20 years yeah. <laughs> yeah. i don't care Respectfully, I need to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for answering my question. Um, my concern. I'll be right behind you. There was another. The realist. <laughs> there was a word that perhaps um, could be. We could tweak that one word, right? Wasn't yeah, there a word the that one was? On, um, where is it? Determining public safety priorities. Okay. okay, what was that? I think it's in the ordinance. It's, B, it's in the ordinance. ordinance. It's in Not the, the ordinance. ballot. It's right under B five. On the purchase price paid. Uh, funding. We're talking about the, who makes the determination. The city manager, in, a, in coordination with the police oh. chief, shall determine. And there's just a typo. It should be determined, not determinate. Not just a typo. Uh, shall de Termin. not terminate. Yeah. Shall determine public safety expenditures which qualify for payment from the public safety sales and use tax fund. So we've heard input related to that. That is something we talked with Tom Peltz about. And, and I tried to clarify it in an email, but the, the, this piece here is to determine what the priorities are of the police department and how the money is gonna be spent. So you can't take away the authority of the police chief and give it to city council on what, who's going to determine public safety because that's the police chief and city manager because it's operational. It's administrative. So that's the intent behind it. We can tweak the language, but at, council has the authority already by adopting the annual budget to, to set policy objectives and priorities and to determine when you set the budget how that money is going to be spent for the next year. And there was some recommendation about putting in dollar amounts, fifty thousand cap, which I think the fifty thousand came from how our current right. current code reads: no expenditure over fifty thousand can happen without council's um, approval. My worry on that is we've already went from ten thousand to twenty thousand to fifty thousand on that approval level. In 20 years, 100,000 might be the mark because right now you can't buy anything for 20,000 like it used to be. You would literally at council meetings have a long list of they were going to approve this purchase, this purchase, this purchase. And so 50,000 may need to change over time. So if we lock it into this ballot though, in this ordinance, then the voters are voting on what the spending threshold is of staff. So we don't think that's a good, good practice. But if there is, this really is Tom Pelt's type input, uh, so we don't have any ownership over this if you want to change that paragraph to something that makes more sense to the voter. <coughs> that's fine with us, right? Well, yeah, it's fine with us. I just get nervous whenever uh, you know we hire somebody with a lot of experience with this, and it's one of those paragraphs that uh, he was um, pretty determined on mm -hmm. pretty determined. determine it uh -huh. <laughs> what, if, what if we said something like the city in coordination or according to city budget practices or something like that where, where well but right right now we get a line item budget 
on public safety when we approve the, the ultimate budget. I would think that if council was uncomfortable with something, they need to do their dil due diligence on what's in that budget. And the, I mean, I think that if we're talking checks and balances, we have that checks and balances now because we all have input on the budget and we all vote, ultimately vote on the budget. And it's not like something mid-year, something would change. Agreed. Because cause if it was going to change and it was $50,000, it's got to come before us anyway. Right. Agreed. So I, I, I think that in a checks and balance system, the checks and the balances are there. How about if we added in there uh, the uh, financial director? So we've got the city manager in coordination with the police chief and the finance manager. The council's still going to have it. So we still have it. So I, yeah. I don't I see don't any reason to modify the language mm -hmm. because yeah. everything we need, we already have. I don't think we should be changing the language of this paragraph. Um, in that. such, my uh, English major over here points out the definition of oh, yeah. determinate is having defined oh, limits, definitely settled, conclusively <coughs> <got> determined. <coughs> it isn't a typo. So it is the word intended? It is, it oh. is yeah. Okay. She's going to educate us all yet. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Today was not a busy day. Do you want me to take over on this agenda? Yeah. 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 Thank you to our Cracker Jack attorney um, over there. Does that, does that wrap up discussion on the language issues that we were having? I just want to make sure we're comfortable with that paragraph. Do we think the voters are going to understand the intent of that paragraph? That was my concern when I was looking at it originally. I'm not sure that we have some people who wouldn't try to jump on it possibly. Because they think it's giving too much authority to the city manager and the police chief without Absolutely. input of council, right? right? That's what we're hearing. Yep. So, so we're just talking about the ballot language. <clears throat> this is just no. the ordinance. That's what I'm ordinance. saying is that what we really be, need to be concerned about with our voters is the ballot language. That's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of our voters are going to read the ordinance. So if we, I don't think there's any of that. The ballot language can't be changed by council in a year. The ballot language, once it's voted on, that's the that that can't be changed. It, uh, and what that paragraph is is instructing the in the ordinance how we're going how we operate. Um, yeah, I, don't I mean, think we, we can change the wording, but the reality is is that is outlining the city budget process. Um, so I, I don't I don't necessarily think we should change it for fear of voters because this is a document that tells the city manager how to operate. What they are looking at in the voting doesn't have that. Uh, and we, can ch we could change the language, but the reality is he would still be doing it because that's what the city manager does. Right, and we can't just, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we want to interfere with an efficiently managed city. And this does that and if we start changing it and then we kind of destroy that or make it much less effective at least well if our ordinances start to include and we'll do things the way we do things then when if we don't put that in an ordinance does that mean in that case we aren't going to follow the normal procedures like it just seems like if our ordinances are going to start saying and we follow all the normal procedures then every ordinance better start saying that or you yeah. like where does it end 
so that doesn't it doesn't seem like something we need to include in our ordinance that we will continue to follow our normal procedures I'm good with the way this is is there any further discussion about either the ballot language or the ordinance that are um, on tonight's agenda so can we just summarize the ballot language we have one change that that Stephen's going to write up so the person that makes a motion can read it in and that's that last bullet the fifth one down is that right yes and that and it will be on both it will be on ordinance 2486 because that is referenced and then the actual resolution for the ballot language and uh, I'll, I'll have that uh, paragraph typed up with the changes we discussed okay <clears throat> I think you've done a good job of explaining the paragraph up there what we were just talking about. So I think it's when we're doing presentations, it's a point that we need to, I think, bring that up and at least uh, speak to it because I, I think that's going to leave us open to criticism out there with some of our folks. You're, wait, you're saying we need to say why we're not making changes? No. I'm confused. Well, it just explain. We just had a good explanation of that paragraph with the chief and the city manager, which is part of our normal business process. And it, it has to come back to us for <coughs> approval at the time of the budget process. When I look at that just as it's written, it tells me these two guys might decide to go to Hawaii to discuss this. And <coughs> I just think we need to be able to demonstrate the process that we're talking about so if that question comes up we have a way to discuss it you could ask that you could ask that question tonight for clarification great okay anything else before we move on to the item b you good okay the riverwood estates improvement district an assessment of utility extension costs City Engineer Scott Murphy, you want to give us an update on this and what's happening next? Sure. Thank you. So the um, everybody here was. Or, I'm sure.